Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at analyzing the quiz questions that immediately follow a gizmo quiz. In addition to analyzing the quiz qu uh, questions from specifically the determining of a spring constant gizmo lab, we're also going to take a look at how to properly fill out a multiple choice analysis form. Feel free to pause uh, or rewind the video as needed. Before we begin, one thing to note, when you're filling out the quiz correction form, one of the things you have to be able to do is identify a concept and identify clues in the question that help you identify the concept. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the concepts are essentially listed at the top of any student exploration that accompanies a gizmo lab. The vocabulary that's listed in themselves are the concepts. The concepts for this lab are displacement, which represents how far the spring was stretched, equilibrium, which is the point at which the spring is not being stretched or compressed, Hooke's law, which refers to the restoring force on a spring being directly related to the displacement of that uh, string, the spring, uh, the restoring force itself, uh, which is the spring wanting to either compress itself or stretch itself back towards equilibrium. In other words, the spring wants to reestablish the equilibrium. A uh, slope, the slope of the line in this case will connect to a particular concept, so the spring itself, the spring constant, which in the case of a force versus displacement graph will be the slope, that is where it connects, and weight, because weight is what's going to be stretching the spring and essentially um, uh, equal and opposite to the spring force. Now, let's go ahead and begin by taking a look at each question. <clears throat> As we review a question, let's go back up to the top here and see how we would fill out our multiple choice analysis quiz correction form. Number one. The two diagrams below show a spring, first with no masses hanging from it, and then with a pan and mass D hanging from it. How much will the spring stretch by the addition of the masses and pan D? Well, First, let's take a look here. We can see that the original line is somewhere around five centimeters, and this line, well, it's not quite seven. Seven would be right here, nor is it six and a half. Six and a half would be right here. That line looks to be about, again, estimating, maybe six and two thirds, 6.7, which means this distance here to this distance here would be the displacement or the stretching of the spring, which is what we can safely identify as our concept. Now, what clues in the question help us figure out that the Displacement is the concept. Well, the question is asking how much is the spring being stretched? So sometimes the concept identification is clear within what is being asked in the question. Sometimes it's a relative clue in the question too. Question asks how much Is spring being stretched? <laughs> now let's complete the rest of the question. First thing you always do is try to identify the concept. 
Well, displacement is simple as final position minus initial position. which would be 6.7 minus 5, or 1.7 centimeters. This would be the formula that's required. By formula, we're talking about the equation that's required. And this would be the work needing to be shown by the solution. When you have a problem that is being worked out, you need to show the work, even if it's easy work such as this. If it is a problem that has a qualitative or descriptive answer, then you need to write a sentence or two explaining how that solution came about. The last thing, of course, is to answer the question, which would approximately be A. and we number it on the outside. Number two, the two diagrams below show a spring that is unstretched and one with a mass of 40 grams hanging from it. How far will the spring stretch with a mass of 80 grams hanging from it? Okay, well, again, it does deal with a little bit of displacement concepts, but it goes a little bit deeper than just displacement. You displace the spring with 40 grams. Question says, how much will it be displaced with double the mass? This is known as Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law states that the displacement of a, of a spring is directly proportional. We'll talk about what directly proportional means shortly. To the restoring force of the spring. And in this one here, we are told the spring stretches with 40, how much will it stretch with 80? What this basically means is doubling the mass doubles the weight. And thus the spring force. This would also double the displacement. Now, since a formula or an equation wasn't really required for this problem, we can put NA for not applicable. The clue in the question is relating, the question relates resp uh, displacement of the spring to a mass 
that stretches the spring. Lastly, let's take a look. If the spring stretches to 40 grams, and that would originally be from about five to a little bit over six, that means a displacement of one centimeter. That means doubling the mass would thereby double the displacement to a little over two centimeters. Number three, which graph represents the stiffness or the stiffest spring? Well, the stiffness of a spring is related to what is called the spring constant. Since the question is asking about stiffness of the spring, the question is essentially asking about the spring constant. Now, let's continue with the question. <clears throat> the slope of a force versus displacement graph is also the spring constant. So slope is another concept within this question. A question can have more than one concept. Graph C represents the stiffest spring. because it has the steepest slope. Again, no formula needed. The answer is C. Number four. The graph below represents the stretch of a spring under different amounts of force. How much force would have to be applied to the spring to cause it to stretch a distance of three centimeters from its resting position? This is another example of a Hooke's Law concept. We know this because the graph is relating spring force and displacement. And Hooke's law states that the spring force is directly proportional to displacement. Specifically directly proportional, again, refers to the fact that the data lines up linear, passing through the origin. Now, within this question, we're also asked to 
uh, deal with the slope of the line and specifically uh, extrapolating beyond the data. The largest data of uh, is um, one newton and approximately two centimeters of stretch. And we're asked to essentially figure out how much force there would be with three centimeters of stretch. So we go to three centimeters of stretch. We go up to the line and the slope of the line represents K. K is the slope of the line or the spring constant or the stiffness of the spring. And then we go over and we relate it to the amount of force that would need to be pulled on to stretch it this far. And we can see that approximately uh, is about one and a half Newton. three centimeters of stretch displacement corresponds to about one and a half newtons of spring force right, according to the graph. Lastly, let's take a look at number five. <clears throat> well, it says, what mass would have to be hung from a spring represented by the uh, graph below to stretch it a distance of six centimeters? Well, we can see when stretched to six centimeters, we go up to the graph and you can see it's almost to one almost to one newton. It's a little bit below one newton. In fact, if we continue reading, it says, remember that mass in grams can be converted to force in newtons by multiplying by 0 0.0098. Okay, so 0 0.0098 newtons per gram times any mass, right, can converted to force. So this is a conversion. Okay, see the mass in grams would cancel here, leaving you force in newtons. Assume the blue arrow is pointing at 6.98. So 6 would be the displacement stretch and 0.98 would be the force. Well, we're looking at the concept of the slope and spring constant again. As we are using the slope in order to extrapolate this information. The slope the spring constant, and possibly even Hooke's law would be representative concepts for this particular question. Okay, and again, we know this because we are the question uses a graph, uses slope of a force versus displacement graph. Oops, I don't need to write displacement twice. Now, there is an equation that's used, and it's one that was provided for in the question, and that is force is equal to 0 0.0098 times the mass but we're looking for how much mass. So F equals 0 0.0098 times the mass. And to solve for mass, you would need to divide by 0 0.0098. So 
So how much mass would be needed to stretch this spring to six centimeters? Well, at six centimeters, it corresponds to approximately 0.98 newtons of force. And we're dividing this by the conversion, which is 0 0.0098 newtons per gram. And when we divide those two, we get approximately 100 grams. which is C. And this is how to properly fill out the multiple choice question analysis for quiz corrections.